Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this video, we're gonna see about how we can use unary and binary operator interfaces in in uh, in Java space, right? So I cannot directly find a use case where we can use it in test automation, but you know we will try to use it in Java so that uh, you can take that knowledge and ap apply it wherever you feel uh, that is relevant in a test automation world, right? Without wasting much time, we will see how we can use that in, in our code, right? So let me go to the IntelliJ workspace and uh, imagine I have a list like this that has a, a lot of strings, you know, in it. And now there is a requirement that I need to convert all the strings in this list to, a, to an uppercase, right? So what is the easiest way to do it? Or, you know, what is the first thought that we get, right? We normally create a new list. Okay, what do we do? We normally create a new list and then um, uh, let me name it as strings for now and let's let it be an array list. Okay, and what do we do? We'll normally run a for loop. Okay, so we run a for loop and so let's take an example like this and we'll add each of them, right? Like this. Uh, temp dot to uppercase right we'll do that so once after running all these things what i can do i can if i want to print the values what i will do normally i'll do strings dot sorry guys strings dot for each right so if you are watching this uh, video you might be watched the you know i assume that you have watched all the previous videos so i'm using a consumer interface implementation here and i'm trying to print all the values right so this will print me the actual values in the uppercase, right? But there is two problem here. One, we are using an another array list. Again, we, it adds some space to it. We are running a for loop. Again, uh, it's, it's it's little verbose. We can, if you are watching this, uh, you know, playlist from the start, then you might be thinking on another solution, okay? Like um, using a for each instead of this, right? So maybe we can run like this, right? So list dot for each. Uh, we can do a stream as well and map, okay, whatever the string that is coming, I'll convert them to uppercase, right? And uh, do a for each, okay, and then I'll print out that, right? This normally, this is also possible, right? We can also do that. That's completely fine, right? This will also work fine. But there is also other way where you don't have to open a stream, do all these conversions, okay? There is something called as, uh, replace all method that takes in a unary operator as an as an argument. What is an unary operator? I'm I have heard about it. So if you notice that if there is an interface called as function that takes in a string and returns a string, okay? Uh, pardon my typos, guys. Takes in a string and returns the string. The method apply that takes a string and returns string, then it is a little verbose, right, to de define like this. So you can rather use it as unary operator and string, okay? which is same as this, okay? This is same like this. Okay, you can also mention like this. If there is a function interface that takes in one data type and return the same data type, then you can call it as a unary operator interface as well. This is more specific, right? So, so that's what we're gonna do. So this is taking a unary operator. So what I'm just telling, uh, do a string to uppercase, okay? I'm calling the two uppercase methods from the string class. Again, you can use the lambda as well, whatever the string that is coming, I'm gonna call a two uppercase here, right? So you can also do that. So since this is a lambda that takes in the same value, okay, you can use a method reference in the, instead of the lambda. See, even my IntelliJ ID is suggesting that, so you can use a method reference here, right? This is how we normally do, right? This is very easy to use just a method and pass an argument instead of running a for loop, doing all the complex operation. No, it's very simple now, right? Good. So now we also learn about what is a binary operator. So guys, we have used a unary operator of string, you know, generic type string. You can apply this logic to other data types as well, whether be it an employee class or an integer class or other classes. Right? Good. So we have learned about this. Let's let's also take an example where we can learn about a binary operator. Let's uh, let's name that particular test as binary operator test. And uh, let me assume that I have a list of integer like this, and I want to import. Right. I want to find the sum of these numbers. Right. In the list. So what do I normally do? I run a for loop. Uh, you know, uh, till the numbers dot size. Okay. Size and i plus plus, right? So i equal to zero. 
I run like this. Okay, let's assume I also have a variable called a sum that is initialized to zero. I normally do sum equal to sum plus numbers dot get index, right? You can also use plus equal to, but this is more readable for me. I, I prefer using this way. Good. Some at the end of the for loop, what I normally do, I, I print the sum, right? So this is a pretty simple use case. I'm than I, I can easily do this or anyone can easily do this, but there are better ways to do this, right? So we'll see what are the better ways to do this. Okay, this is the normal way. Let's let's also assume you also know a lot of lot about uh, lambdas. Then what you can also do you can run a, for you know parallel stream. I use a parallel stream to parallelly process them. And what I can do, I can convert. Okay, I can convert the integer. The so basically this holds an integer type, guys. Okay, integer is a class that is different from your primitive type integer. So I I want to convert the integer to Int so that I am using a map to int method that takes in okay so integer dot to int value so I am converting all those uh, classes class integer class objects to primitive type right so once I do this I call the sum method which can you know I can print directly right so using this you can also do it hey Amudan I can also do like this yes this will work let's also check whether it is working. But, but our use cases, we want to use a binary operator that can, you know, there is some problem here. One is we are, we are doing unboxing here, okay? We are, we are changing an integer type object to, to primitive type. This takes some, some little bit of efforts, right? You, you're converting something from one to another, right? It takes a little bit of effort. We can also do this much easy way. Let's take a numbers uh, dot, um, you use a parallel stream that's okay. And what I'm going to do, there is something called as reduce method that, that takes integer of identity and binary operator. So there are two things, okay? Uh, it's a overloader method that takes in a lot of things, okay? If you notice, it takes in just a binary operator. If you want to just give binary operator, but there is something integer identity and binary operator. This identity is almost like your initial value. When we use the for loop, we initialize the sum equal to zero, right? The same way you can also do this. I, I assume the initial value is zero and binary operator is something, it's similar to your function, okay? If you have a function interface, that takes in, sorry guys, it's a by function. By function that takes in string, comma string, it takes two arguments and return the same thing, okay? In our case, it basically takes in two, in, two integers, okay, and return another integer, okay? So instead of, it is so verbose, right? We are passing three generics. Instead of that, you can directly tell binary operator and integer, okay? This is same as by function, integer, comma, integer, comma, integer. Okay, so that's what we're gonna use. So what I'm doing, I take in two integers. Okay, let's name it as A comma B. If I take in two of them, I want to just sum it. Okay, that's plus A plus B, that's it guys. So now this this, this gives you the answer. I'm doing a, a sort and then I'm printing it, right? Let's try to check and uh, whether it is giving the expected results. So in both the cases, we are getting 55 as an output, but if you notice, it's also, we, there is a scope that we can optimize this, that you can call integer dot colon colon sum method. Okay, there is a method called sum, which is actually that, right? But I missing one bracket, so you'll add that. Now, instead of the lambda, you can also use like this. I'm using a sum method from the integer class. If you notice it takes in two arguments and return A plus B, which is what we have written before. So that's what I have written here. So you can run like this, okay? So what's the better approach? You know, I think this is a better approach because there is no uh, process of converting your integer class type to uh, primitive type. So yeah, yeah, guys, so this is an, practical use case of where we can use binary operator, how we can make our code more clean than before, right? So we, it's it's just another way of writing things. Please learn about all these things. I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada, bye-bye from Amazon. Tada, guys.